Today, we're talking about the top five times that Dokkan fumbled. There, of course, have been a ton of times that they fumbled, if we're being really honest, especially now that we're coming up on eight years of this game existing. They've been here since the beginning on Global, experienced every single one of these I am mentioning, and I want to talk about it. Let's dive in. A top five list would not be a top five list without some honorable mentions. So first up, Raditz. Mentioning Raditz because I feel like he is on the sort of same level of hype as, say, a Captain Ginyu. I think some might even argue Ginyu might even be more hype than Raditz as a character. But when you're looking at a gacha game, it's so much different than, say, something like Fighters, you know, versus two, where they release a character, you go into the store, and you pay $4.99 and you get it. This is a gacha game. Obviously, it could be the same case. You could single summon him, or you could not, and it could be way, way, way more stones. So, in order to make it feel like the character is worth that level of value, it either needs to be a character that you very much so want to pull. So, someone that is very high which of course that is very subjective depending on characters you like in the series or their kit is absolutely insane or the other is that it's it's both right they're a very hype character and their kit is crazy in the case of raditz he's nowhere near as bad as a lot of people like to say that he was but he wasn't that good either especially not coming from the fact that he's a raditz so offense to all the raditz fans out there Dotto. but he isn't a fusion he isn't a goku he isn't a vegeta so you would have thought raditz falling up ginyu who had incredible linking partners and incredible team all of that and being an incredible unit himself you then come to raditz and you're like okay so what were they what were they thinking the animations were pretty lackluster the kit was pretty lackluster and it's raditz it's a fumble because they should have just made that unit way better sure leave the animations whatever it's raditz whatever but make the kit crazy like what this is raditz and another audible mention is have you liked the video and have you subscribed because we're trying to hit a million this year one million Next up, a friend system. And why this is so important here, I think, and almost made my top five list, is because if we could use ourselves as our friends, it would incentivize us to even want to summon more. You'd want that rainbow character because you know you're going to be able to use that in the seventh slot as your friend character that you're picking. And in return, you want them to be the best that they can possibly be, especially when it is the random one-off characters that you rarely see, like Android 13, or at this point in Pan's life cycle on JP Pan, who's like six months old, but I can never find her. So random characters characters like that that people rarely set you still just don't find the way the friend system works right now is it actually populates it based on characters that have beaten the stage before so if it's like if the stage requires a certain mission for a very specific category then you probably will find them because someone probably used them previously so that's fine but if you're going into like a red zone stage or whatever it might be and there's no mission related it's just super random character lead there's a really good chance you're just not going to find them at all and given the fact that it is a core system to this game but they haven't really done anything with it I'm looking at you all the friend points i have that i have no reason to use why they won't just update it to where we can use ourselves like they did in one piece treasure cruise i really don't know and i look forward to hopefully seeing that change sometime 2023 but it won't it's sure copium also i want to give a shout out to dokkan productions here who partially inspired today's video next up i have to mention this here that is the eza for going and sell still not being out on global not even being announced for global not much more to say here i'm not really sure why they didn't they are very good eza so maybe they think if you have them it's going to negate you from wanting to actually summon for other characters they haven't released yet i don't know i don't i don't know what they're doing it's so weird it makes no sense at all and last before the actual top five list the original battlefield which actually had its own unique game style i just have to include this here it wasn't the same thing we have now which is just ultimately different modes where you're playing the exact same game they actually introduced an entirely new way to use your characters where they had different and unique characteristics that changed the way you actually played it was so cool if you weren't familiar in battlefield you had to sort of drop your units in they scrolled across the screen and the point was for them to defeat the enemies and eventually get to the enemy defense line break it and then once you did that the characters that made it through the enemy defense line were able to then go fight the boss so then it did become very similar to battlefield 2.0 or ultimate clash as we know it now but that previous little bit i would have loved to see them build on more because agl type characters had high movement speed so they actually moved across the screen faster tech characters were able to attack all the enemies in a group so if a bunch of enemies were stacked up the tech characters would be able to attack them all not just one-on-one -on -one. int characters were able to damage the barrier more than other characters str characters didn't have type disadvantage and
and they also had an attack boost and then physical type characters were your sort of tanking type where they were able to have a boosted hp amount so like there was such a cool idea here and they just scrapped it and it's been six years now and they've never brought it back now as we actually dive into our top five list here a few things to note this game is eight years old there have been so many times they've done this i want you to take the time right now to let me know one of the times you feel like dokkan fumbled especially if it isn't on my list secondly as i just said there's been so many times there's no way for me to encapsulate all of them there's been stone refunds terrible celebrations what are they doing moments across eight years it's been crazy but these are the five times that i remember and really stuck out to me in my head let's go agl gohan now this has gotten so much better due to categories new characters all of that but when he released those active ability requirements were atrocious they could have fixed this so easily by making the android 16 that released with him an agl type character because literally he would have been led by the gohan the gohan literally leads super agl as well as kamami ha and so the android 16 could have went on to the team and it would have been fine at that time they didn't do that i have no idea what their thought process was behind those active requirements at the time again they're substantially better now they're not even an issue anymore honestly especially with just how strong he is post eza but back in 2019 when he released it was terrible it was awful and i really don't know what they were thinking coming in at number four i thought about making this one even higher on the list but i feel like it'd be more recency biased than anything beast gohan now since using him i still think he's better than a lot of people give him credit for however i'm still on the side of like why did they not just make it a transformation and if you are going to make it an active ability make it absolutely insane the fact that we're here he's brand new he's the newest release on the jp side of the game basically the newest release on the global side too and his active ability hits for under 5 million consistently is just garbage as we go farther into events first off his kit is going to unfortunately start to fall behind just in general take away his active ability but also bosses are going to get higher defense higher pools of hp and it's going to continue to do less and less and less and it's beast gohan not to mention it's beast gohan that uses his transformation and his special beam cannon so like in terms of actual animations they have left to use there are still some and let's not forget the fact that they've also created their own or just referenced other material but just slapped the new form over it which they could easily do with other different gohan attacks from the anime and all of that in games but if we're just being real with ourselves we're not going to see a beast gohan especially not, i don't foresee it in 2023 at all i'm probably even lucky to see a new one in 2024 so here he was this was the time to actually capitalize on the hype which again had already diminished some because the movie was already over six months old in japan and four months old in the states but it was such a massive fumble to release him in the state that they did and again i think honestly still would have been a little disappointed if it wasn't a transformation no matter what but if his active actually was just like a 20 mil attack stat or something or even 30 mil because dude it's beast Gohan. It is arguably one of the single strongest attacks in the Dragon Ball universe at the time of filming this, and it doesn't feel like it at all. I've watched my physical kid Goku that came out three months before him, who is just a TUR, do more damage with his active than the Beast Gohan that's an LR with LR stats who just released. Ah, it makes no sense. Ah, okay. Anyways, all that to say, I do still think his kit right now is mostly fine, minus the active, which is the Beast Gohan part, which makes no sense. Why, Akoski? Next up, we have the STR Goku you know rate change you're like what are you talking about nano i know because this was so long ago this was first anniversary on the global side of dogon now i think some people get confused on this because it was a big deal at the time but if we actually reference this post right here it clears it up very very well so on july 8th of 2016 the first anniversary banners release the ssr rate is seven percent across the board you also have to remember this was before we had guaranteed ssrs so seven percent was actually better than what we were used to because give or take first off the rates weren't posted back in the day we had people like tlm and stuff like that who would make summon simulators that would give us an idea of the rate to pull certain characters. And there were some bears I remember being as bad as like a 3% SSR rate. Like Physical Kid Boo was awful. The rates were awful. So going into the anniversary, having buy three, get one free, as well as 7% give or take rates was incredible. So as they say here, as per usual, nothing out of the ordinary yet. July 11th, STR Gogeta banner, three plus one ends. Replaced with the normal STR Gogeta banner, 7% SSR rates across the board and nothing out of the ordinary yet. And then on July 26th, the SCR Gogeta banner is still here along with several other banners because they used to release stuff just like crazy. There was no real rhyme or reason to the way they released things. Units would just release it. It's just a crazy pay. It was new banners, new Dokkan Fest banners, all this every single week. It was insane. And all SSR rates across all banners were reduced from 7% to 5%, which did not 
happen on Japan. I remember this was so absolutely insane. I remember this was such a massive deal, especially because back then, SCR Gogeta was so strong at the time that you had people giving up their accounts from the last year of grinding and getting totally new accounts that had farm stones and actually had an STR Super Gogeta. That's how crazy this unit was. I don't think we'll ever have another unit. Like it's always getting progressively stronger and every anniversary and every worldwide like units get crazier and crazier. But I don't know if we'll ever have a time where the actual jump in power creep is as strong as pre SCR Gogeta and post SCR Gogeta, which is why I think this one stands out so much in my mind. And why I remember this so vividly is because it was such a game changer unit for every person's account possible that you literally didn't want to progress past the anniversary at all. It wasn't like a situation of like, well, I'll get them later. I'll get them with coins, whatever. You literally didn't even want to play the game past him releasing and not having him. And it was crazy that they actually reduced rates before the banner went away. The download celebration of 2017. A first in the history of the game where two massive releases were releasing on both global and JP at the same time. Tech Super Saiyan 4 or Gogeta and physical Omega Shinron, who would release with no leader abilities. Now, if you guys do not remember or you weren't there, they were the two units that introduced categories. They were the first ever category leads. Prior to that, you either ran something like SR Gogeta, who gave you key across the board. SR Gogeta was definitely a couple metas behind this, but that was an option. And then you had mono teams. That's pretty much all you ran were mono teams. They'd spent the last year post SR Gogeta releasing tons and tons of mono units, mono fizz, mono, all just same type units. And then we had this introduction of categories. If you can believe it, the game did not used to have categories. And for whatever reason, they released on global without their leader abilities. Their leader abilities literally said in game to be released now yes it was cool they released at the same time you know why they didn't give them their leader abilities they weren't done releasing the mono units on global they were still in the middle of finishing up the release of their monotyping units on global and actually at the time of this worldwide had just celebrated the second anniversary which was the introduction of the ssj4 vegeta and goku who actually bumped us up on our mono teams even further and so if they would have introduced categories i'm sure they felt like that would then negate the need and want to summon for the other mono leads that would follow up for the next four or five months after the release of Gogeta and Omega. Whereas in the JP timeline, we were done with mono teams. We were now in a new era with category teams. And so it was insane at the time on the global side of the game to be summoning for these units, spending actual money on this game, and you're getting an incomplete unit that you didn't even know when the leader ability would release at all because it just said to be released. I still don't get their thought process behind it. Just, just take the L and just give them their leader ability introduce all of it right there right now release your mono leads after that it would have been fine it would have been okay and obviously it's been fine we're now about to celebrate eight years of the game but this was insane and finally coming at my number one slot now we've had many of times where someone's been refunded like ui goku on the step up banner for new year's 2021 we've had issues where banners have not displayed the correct units we've had things where they covered up units with a PNG and you could clearly see the other unit behind them all sorts of random stuff but the one that just sticks out to me and you still hear about to this day was the 300 stones 300 stones for the Kefla banner. What a banner too to have such a crazy mishap happen. Now, what was so insane about this was JP players, of course, all of us, you know, plebs that are here in the States who can't read Japanese, couldn't see what was actually going on. But what it appeared at the time, which shout out to Koala-san, haven't said that name in a really long time, found a very old post from over five years ago detailing all of this. But when the Kefla banner launched, it was a post version update. So it was right after they updated to version 3.8. This was what Bandai tweeted out. With the introduction of version 3.8, there was an error that would display wrong information in the pullable character list of the gacha. There was a bug in version 3.8 where the part that manages the memory didn't function correctly. Therefore, different players got to see different results in the pullable character screen depending on when you open the list. So here's what was happening is players were saying either A, units were just totally missing because this was a banner that should have stuff like LR Gohan on it, LR Majin Vegeta, all of that. And so Japan players were saying that they literally were opening their list to just look to see what characters they could pull. And LR Gohan, like, was wasn't there. Or on the flip side of that, it'd be something like, let's say the intelligence Piccolo from... <laughs> 
from Dragon Ball Super would be in there like three times in a row. So in their minds, he was replacing other characters and you had the chance of pulling him three times more likely than other characters that you would obviously want to pull even at that time that in Piccolo was awful. So that's what this is referencing when it's saying you would see different results in the pullable character screen. Because of this bug, memory got overwritten when the app tried to communicate with the server when pressing the scouter button. They have confirmed that the actual characters that could be pulled and the rates were correct even though the bug occurred. They want to reassure everyone once again that rates are not being adjusted for different players. So that was another big thing is that because different players were clicking that and seeing different characters in their sort of character list, they thought like each person, again, if you've ever heard reset the seed, all of that, like reset the app to get a different seed, people had thought that we had different pool of characters based on your actual Dokkan like ID. And this was further proving that because again, the clarity of rates on these banners tenfold compared to back then. And I still feel like there's still some skepticisms behind it. There's so many laws around it. They really couldn't do anything like that. But back then it was more of the wild west right a lot of people had it in their minds that each person had different rates for different characters for different banners and this made it seem like that even more which is why it got even crazier people are checking their lists they're missing lrs that they're trying to pull other people have characters like multiple times they think they have boosted rates for like terrible characters and so you then you have this situation where then it has something that is visually proving that to players this was insane so actions that have been taken all players will get 300 dragon stones as compensation this was crazy. By the way, a big aspect of this is Global felt like they should get it too, and Global never got 300 Dragon Stones. This was a huge deal. The people in the community, even with them addressing this, there were still several people I remember believing that no, there were different rates. People had different rates for different characters. I mean, it was nuts. Also, all players that have pulled during the time that the bug occurred will get their U Stones on the banners refunded. So that means you could have been summoning. And again, as far as they state, the banner was fine. It was just a visual bug. So the banner was still fine. Remember, we had, we got like a big call with like a ton of a ton of us we're just like talking about it people like tlm people like Renzi, the person that ran dbz.space all of them were in there and we were discussing whether we thought it was just a visual bug or if they were actually scamming people and it ended up being that everyone even with them like testing the banners and all of that because again they were able to actually th just throw simulated sort of summons at the banners and get rates still basically confirmed it was a visual bug even through that even basically through like a, th a sort of like third party investigation nearly so presumably your summons were fine you get all of them refunded if you happen to summon before they detected the bug and then you also got 300 dragon stones for free because this was a big deal like there are so many laws around the transparency of rates when you're summoning for characters in these like any any gotcha game anything like that there has to be full transparency about what exactly you're spending money on and so the idea that you're putting it into players heads that they might not be getting what they're paying for that's a big no-no right that, that's like huge issue and so that's why there was on top of refunding all the stones you spent you also got 300 back i think i spent around 250 i was pretty sad anytime they've done a refund i've never spent a ton <laughs> like it's, it's been super unfortunate i've never spent just like a ton of stones like now now it would be different because now i'm typically summoning right as banners go live and we're throwing a tons of stones at them and all of that uh, it's, I'm, I'm not saying i want them to fumble again but it's like you know we'll get some free summons out of it next up they said a full detailed exclamation on the bug will still be coming in a separate post and there will be a version update coming up that will solve these problems the extreme z battle event will be postponed until this new version is available and those are the top five times i think dokkan fumbled hit that like button subscribe and i'll see you on the next one bye